In this video, we will learn how to use CSS Flexbox, the ultimate tool for centering any element, reordering elements on a page, and creating dynamic layouts that look great on any screen size. In the description below this video, you'll find the GitHub repository with all the examples. The first example we're going to be looking at is how to take an element and how do we center it horizontally on our page. As we can see here on the right, we see that we have the body element, and that is the element that has this striped border, it has a class of flex parent and then inside that body element we have a flex child which is this box. If we open our style sheet we see that we have our flex parent here and to start using Flexbox. We need to set a display property. Flexbox or flex is one of the options. So we have to put the display property of flex in order to enable Flexbox on this body element and on all the children inside of it. Now that we have enabled Flexbox, nothing is changing yet because first of all we only have one element and then second we haven't told this element to do anything in particular, which is what we're going to do now because we want this element to be in the center horizontally. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a property called justify content. What this is saying is that inside of this flex parent, we want all of the content, which is currently just this one div, to have justify property. And then we can choose which way or at which point do we want it to be justified. So in this case, we wanted it to be in the center. So if we click that and we hit save, we see that we have justified our content to the center. If we would rather have it at the right side, we could say flex end and we save and we see that it is on the right side. Also, we could put flex start and it will be at the initial position. But what happens if we have two elements inside our body here represented as these two squares while we use the justify content property? Well, first off, we're going to write our display flex. And notice what happens here when I save. It goes from being lined up the divs one under the other to being lined up horizontally one after the other. If I hover over the body, the flex parent, we see that the whole entire body has been divided between these two flex elements. And then there is some purple uh, space on the side that is kind of just a leftover space. If there were more elements here, they would all try to squeeze in horizontally in this space and they would actually stretch and decompress the size of the boxes to fit all of the flex children. Whilst if I remove or comment out the display flex property, we see that the flex parent, the body, isn't divided in the same way. Now if I put a justify content here and we say center, that both of them are now in the center. If we say flex end, we see that both of them are at the end, just like in the last example. But another thing we can do with justify content is, is we can decide the spacing between the elements. So we can, for example, say space around, which gives equal space here and here and here and here. So all elements have the same equal space between them. And the reason that it looks like there's more space in the middle is because space around specifically says that each element should have equal spacing around them and shouldn't take into account how that is going to necessarily display on, on the edges. Whilst if we were to say space evenly, it would look more even. Now it would take into consideration the total space and make it so that it is an even amount of space between every box and its border. While space between will just put an even amount of space between each element. And in this case, it's only two. So the space between them is the only space that is going to be taken. So now we know how to position our elements any way we want horizontally. But how do we do that vertically or specifically? Let's say I want to put these elements in the middle of my container and I want it to be so that they're in the middle regardless of how big the container is. So let me make it, make it a bit bigger here like so. How do we do that? Well, we start out as always by putting a display flex property, now enabling Flexbox. We can put our justify content to the center, centering the elements horizontally. Then we add another property called align items. So where justify content aligns items on a horizontal axis or the X axis, align items aligns them along the uh, vertical axis 
or the y-axis. Here we can also say that we want to simply put it in the center. This is how easy Flexbox makes it to center any element within its parent element. With only three CSS properties, we can center any element regardless of the size of the parent body. We can of course say that we want it to be not in the center, but let's say in the flex end, putting them vertically at the bottom uh, end. But what if we want to have a flex container like this body here, but we don't want things to line up horizontally. We want them to be vertically like they are initially. Then we can add a property called flex direction. And we can say that it has a row, which it currently has, or we can say that it has a column. And now we can get it back to its initial column display. Well, let's say I like the row. So I'm going to give it a row display, but I would like the order of the boxes to be reversed. So I would like three to be first and one to be last. Then I can give it a flex direction of row reverse. And now we see that three is first, followed by two, followed by one. But something else happened as well. All the elements are instead of on the left side, they moved to the right side. This is because of the way row reverse works. And in order to get it to its initial position, if that's what we want, because in this example, we only want to reverse the boxes. We don't want to change its position. We give it an additional justify content that we've already learned of flex end. Because remember, justify content now says that we want this to be at the end position, which in this case, this is the start. So the opposite end would be here. So flex end, and there we go. And now we have reversed our order, keeping the positions the same place. If I comment out this justify content and show you what it would look like if we had a column instead. So in a column reverse, we have reversed the order of the boxes, but now their flex start position is reversed. So if we want it to be at the top again, we simply uncomment this and we get it so. In our next example, we want to reorder these children in a different way. And we can do so by using a property called order. So first let's display flex to the parent container. And then let's target our third box by targeting its class, number three. And we're gonna give it an order property of minus one. And this will put our third box in the first position because by default, all elements have an order value of zero. So if we want it to be before one, which would have an order of zero, we need it to be less. So if we copy this one and we target one instead, we see that if we give it an order of minus two, it's going to be in the first position. If we give it an order of zero, it's gonna go back to its initial position. If we give it an order of one, two is gonna be ahead of one because it has an order of zero. So in this way, we can decide specifically which exact element has which position. But let's say we don't want to reorder each specific element, but we want to actually place them individually. Then we can use a property called align self. So giving the flex parent a display flex, and again targeting the third box using the class three, we are going to align self. Previously we used align items inside of the flex parent, but now we're using align self inside of the child element. And here, let's say we want to give it a flex end. As we can see, align self aligns a flex item along the cross axis of what it normally has, which is along the X axis. So align self will align it on the Y axis. If we say flex direction here, column, we see that it is reversed. So align self will always go on the cross section of the normal flex direction. In our next example, we see what happens with a flex container when we just add enough elements in it that it's going to smoosh all the boxes. They still have the same height and width property, but because by default, Flexbox tries to put every single element on the same line. The, if these were images, they were kind of be skewed and stretched. If we comment out our display flex, we see that they have, they're just lining up one after the other. So it is the Flexbox property that is 
smooshing them together. And if I were to make the screen even smaller, they would become even smaller boxes. So obviously this is probably not what we want on our page. And a very easy way to get around that is to give it a property of flex wrap. And then no wrap is the default setting. And if we give it a wrap, it is going to basically take all the space it can for the boxes without changing their size. And then any other boxes will have to come on the next line. So if we save, we see that that's exactly what happens. And now we see we have four lines. If I stretch it out, it's gonna take two. So it is a very easy dynamic layout, you know, picture grids, product displays, etc. If we give it a property of wrap reverse, then the last item is going to be first and the first is of course going to be at the bottom. This reverses the rows we have, but it, as you can see, it doesn't reverse the order of the row. If we give it a property of flex direction, and we say column, we can now start to really get any kind of display layout we want. And flex wrap and flex direction is so often used together that we have a shorthand for them, which is called flex flow. Let's say we want it to be in the column and we want it to be wrapped. And here we see we have our flex container displaying all its children in a column layout and they are wrapped. They're not on one single line. But as we can see, the standard kind of layout of when our lines are wrapped, here we see that we have it wrapped in a column and then whatever doesn't fit, number seven doesn't fit on this line, so it's starting a new column. Kind of the display, if this was our end result, doesn't really look all that good. Maybe we want all of them to be tight next to each other, to just fill in one after the other. Or maybe we want them to be spaced out in an equal way, so it creates more of a dynamic and uh, prettier website. And then we can use, in addition, a property called align content here. So previously we used align items, and this is a different property. Whereas align items aligns how items are aligned within the container, align content determines how rows or columns are aligned amongst each other. So if we put it at a flex start, we see that all our columns are now in the flex start position, tight next to each other. Flex end puts it at the other location, space, around. Now we get a good space, even space around them. And if we put it on space between, we get this one. That concludes our tutorial. I hope you learned a lot about Flexbox. 